continue. Let's go. Where are we going? Stop moving. Yeah, there's his arms. That's what I was trying to say earlier. It must just look weird because he's got his sleeves rolled up. Um, oh, I can zoom in. There you go. <laughs> Kim does in fact have arms. I don't really like the WASD controls because it's so slow. I just feel like pointing and clicking is actually easier. Right, so we figured out the footprints. That's a that's a big deal. Did we ever try? Yeah, we tried the ball cutters on there. I think this was the building that I was talking about being a pub. Can we pet the mailbox again? I need some the more of that morale. The mailbox greets you with its graffito and bullet holes in the front. <laughs> Can you give me more morale, please? The box seems happy. Okay. You're a good box. You stay there. Um. <laughs> Who walks in games? It's full on sprint everywhere. Yeah, usually sprinting happens a lot. So it's a bit... The walk speed is very slow here, but I think that's on purpose. I wonder if it was him. The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? Okay, so um, this is the gardener lady. Um, you sound surprised. We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. That's fine, I have some questions for you. Of course. What can I help you with? Uh... Oh, do you have some ammonia for us, please? That's what we needed to stop puking. Sure, I'm done with it. Oh, lovely, thank you. <gasps> we can inspect the victim's body, finally. Um, without puking, hopefully. Uh, right, thank you, lovely gardener. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. I'll try. Um, what exactly have you been doing in your greenhouse in March? Well, uh, this might be the last snow we get. At least I hope so. Snow has nutrients in it. Helps everything green up in the spring. At least that's what my grandma always told me. Okay, so she's been putting snow inside the greenhouse. Oh. Visual calculus. I mean, we did just level it up. All you can see oh. is the fact that her skin is a different color from yours. That's literally all. You're going to have to run with that. Whoa. That's... <laughs> what does that mean? Um, holy shit. We should proceed with our business <laughs> Martinez. Wow, I didn't realize the check could like go so wrong. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, I didn't mean anything by it. We had a brain fart. <laughs> um, right. Directions? Of course. Where to? I kind of believed her though, about the... About the snow thing, but the fact that we could just squint. I didn't realize we were just gonna make observations. I thought we were gonna like be like, "Now you're telling the truth here." Uh, where am I? What do you mean? Oh God, I'm a bit disoriented. This is Revachol, right? Yes, sir. District of Martinez. This intersection is called Roundabout North. Okay. Roundabout North. He knows where we are. He just wants directions. Oh. Um, well, what's up in the north? There's the pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more tenements. Not a lot, really. What we really need is the map. The harbour gate? East. 
some kind of commotion, I yeah. think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store too. Fleet. We need to find the store. We have. We've got. We've. We've. <laughs> we've gained. I was gonna say gained and earned at the same time. So I was saying we've gained some money. I mean, in honesty, we didn't actually earn any of it. We only gained it. <laughs> right, what's in the south? Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably. Okay. What's on the other side of the canal? Just coast. There's a little fishing village there and a fish market. But that got closed down ages ago. Right. Rows of stalls under a broad roof where silvery fish were heaped on newspapers. Water, water everywhere, pouring from the heavens in the shadow of the old church. It feels like Shivers just gives us some more flavor to the world. You know what I mean? Um, What kind of a fish market is this? I don't know. The abandoned kind? I was just about to say. It used to gather every spring, but there's nothing to do there now. Just drug addicts. She literally just said that it stopped ages ago. Right, what's in the west? It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. Okay, so that's just a summary of everything we got told in great detail when we left the building. No problem. Uh, what is this fuck the police business? Excuse me? I don't understand either. I just thought I'd ask. She's uncomfortable. Maybe you should drop this line of questioning. The street sign says, fuck the police. Oh, is that here? Uh, let, I mean, if it's right here, let's just point to it. Oh, well, I didn't write it there. I'm just sitting here. I, I believe everything she's saying. Uh, it's all right. I didn't mean to startle you. Okay. All right, but we'll be back if anything sus happens, right? Of course. I won't hold you back. Cool. Her gloves. She's you been helpful. You need them. You have a dead body to deal with after all. Oh. Yeah. Can I borrow your gloves, please? Sure. Keep them. I have another pair. Yay. You are kind, Mrs. Gardner. Okay. She has been extremely helpful. The most helpful person that we've met so far. Oh, that gives us plus one interfacing. Maybe we can open our ledger. Ampoule of ammonia. Um. Okay, so we can actually go and sort the body out now. Perfect timing because we've done a lot of the things that we were intended on doing. Uh, let's just interact it's with it. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board. Cabbage. With the permeables drawer inside. It's barely held together by a clip, then made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Oh, we can't do it again until we actually put a point in it. Never mind. Okay. Okay, what am I doing now then? Oh, these seem all intimidating. Encyclopedia would be the mirror. Oh, so right, yeah, formidable. Okay. Oh, the endurance being legendary would just be the puke and it's not the mirror. That's only formidable. Okay, okay, I'm getting there. I'm getting, I'm understanding some stuff. There's only less than an hour to wait on that. I want to explore more, but also, yeah, I need to get this body down. Otherwise, it's going to be there eight days. a torch on it so everyone oh look at the shadow there, he still is looking right through you with his white eyes 
the body below is entirely dedicated it's, to that corpse smell. It's Emitting still it so low? It does now. Shit. Uh, don't you have a coroner to deal with the body? You would think so, right? But apparently it's my responsibility for the last seven days to have taken it down. Um, a gameplay tip's okay. Um... If it's something that's going to improve my experience that I'm not going to figure out for myself, then yes. But if it's something what I'll figure out for myself... How could you know that though? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Thank you for asking as well. So this is low, so I could... I think maybe I'll just put my next point into endurance then and then that'll go higher again. You can run with double click? Holy shit, thank you so much. <laughs> when you planning to take the ammonia thing? Yeah, that's the skill with the ammonia. I thought it would just be no problem. But yeah. Thank you so much. That is an excellent gameplay <laughs> tip. Thank you. We're going to get around so much faster. <laughs> Gimble Tim of the Century, you are right. Some great tectonic forces crack the pavement like an eggshell. Yikes. Oh, people. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. I think it looks comfy. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. Damn it, Kim. Why are you such a good cop? Right, we've got this person up here. I think we should be going east now, but I also just kind of want to talk to her. It says there's nothing really in the west, so I kind of want to see what's over here first. What is this? This book has a rose, a pistol, and a half-naked dame on its cover. I feel like our guy would enjoy that book, maybe. On the cover stands a very muscular man surrounded by flames. So we've got some different books here. This is a bookstore, not a pub. <laughs> Pate, is that food? <laughs> Which half? <laughs> Good question, Peregrine. <laughs> um. You don't really understand what it's about, nor does it seem important. Well, don't put the thing for me to click on then. <laughs> Boyadirio culture promotes freedom and... Frick, I missed the end of that. About the future, government reads your mind using radio technology. Okay. Crime, romance and biographies of famous people. Oh, we can go in? Ooh. Roaming upstream. Shite, I've forgotten the rest of the sentence. <laughs> but yeah, that's the part that I missed. Thank you. Something about... Oh, I've forgotten now. <laughs> Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. Oh, you're, just, you're a child. Where were you seven days ago? I am, I am the law. <laughs> you can zoom in. Yes, I can zoom in. <laughs> um, a young girl with chubby red cheeks waves at you smiling. Her nose is also red from the cold. I am the law. <laughs> you just... <laughs> <laughs> what was that meant to be? Were you just trying to summon a quad? <laughs> yeah. Were well, you added a quad? <laughs> oh, crafty. I love it. Um, I mean, I just want to say hi, but I also just want to say I am the law for shits and giggles. <laughs> I'll say hi. I'm friendly. 
Are you interested in a new and exciting book? She stomps her feet to feel warmer. Like, this is a nice kid. We can say I am the law to Kuno. Um, what kind of store is this anyway? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Yeah, I read that on the window. It's a bit of a long name, but it tells us exactly what you sell. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses, little girl. Oh, no, we're not smart enough to talk to this little girl. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, God. Don't be ridiculous. I know all these things. You're fooling nobody. Oh, no, we have to do it, don't we? I said I know all these things and I do, goddammit. Sir, are you okay? You've been standing here silently for a while. <laughs> so instead of saying any of the stupid sentences, we just stood <laughs> not talking at all. <laughs> oh, God. I can't read. Oh, did I read something wrong? <laughs> Or is it because of my encyclopedia failings? <laughs> um, damn it. We could have connected with her. Is it okay if I ask some questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. What is your name? My name is Annette, sir. My mum, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside minding the register or organising the stock. Oh, and you just have to stand out here? The girl gazes at the window, then suddenly jolts her eyes wide as if recalling something. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. Oh. Oh, Annette. I feel really sorry for Annette. And you're standing out here in the cold because... I'm signalling that the store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Um. Wait, <laughs> what? I could help by brutally dismantling the free market. <laughs> no. Um. I mean. I want to praise her for what she's doing, but also. I feel like a mum's taking advantage. Like, you could just put a sign in the window, you know? <laughs> Do it, noob. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna pat her head, I think. Dismantle that free market. Isn't the free market a good thing? <laughs> I don't remember. The free market means everyone owns their own... No? What? What? Oh, friggin' hell. Can I have a definition of the free market? <laughs> oh, it very much depends who they ask. I'm going to pat her on the head. Thank you, sir. I'm happy to help mum out with the store. Oh, she smiles and stands upright like a little soldier. Yeah, shouldn't you be at school? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help mum keep this place running. Um, It means you are free to starve. If you can't do anything, other people find useful. Oh, so it's not what I thought it was? <laughs> oh god, I've got so much learning to do. An economic system in which prices are determined by unrestricted competition between privately owned business. Oh, supply and demand. Um... If you can't supply, you can't get paid. So that's a bad thing. Because the businesses could just make things really expensive for no reason. Yeah, if there is no demand, you can't get paid. It's also what is making graphics cards extremely expensive right now. Do we live in a free market? And what's the alternative to a free market does that have a name or is there many alternatives um okay 
<laughs> what is school anyway? Stop asking these questions. Uh, school is stupid, but it also serves a purpose. Mum says it's necessary to do both because it builds character. Mum says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. I mean, you're very admirable little kid. Admirable Annette. Um, there are many alternatives, but anyone who gets annoyed at people suggesting alternatives, call them all communism. Okay. The invisible hand is busy slapping us. Right, I, the free market is not what I thought it was. Um, I thought it was a good thing. Obviously, I got that backwards. But, like I said, I have no experience in politics or economic shit. Like, I've never read up about anything, really. <laughs> I only know what I've kind of either been told or just assumed what things mean without actually knowing what they mean. But this is a good learning experience. Mum says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. Uh-oh, not a cursed house. Behind her, the window has been boarded up. You sense the boards creaking, twisting for a second, and some kind of doubt in her tense shoulders. Good to hear that it's all going well. No, cursed? In what way? Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... Um, she is looking for the right word. Cursed in a way that makes them say no business has ever really... Oh, okay, okay. So it's not like a ghost curse. Um... Ass up? <laughs> I wouldn't really say it like that, but I guess so. Okay. Um, for some people it's good, but it's a very politically charged term, to be honest. It's good for the people that I guess have the supply that is in demand I guess general idea of the free market is that by competing to make things people will compete to sell things for less but what we are starting to see more and more are people with more, a lot of money selling things under price because they can afford it until everyone else has no money left and then they can charge what they want because the temp competition has been buried. Ah, yep, yep, yep. So technically it should be a good thing, but people take advantage of it and like strategize. Think big supermarket versus small local shop. Yeah, so I assumed like free market was encouraging of small local shops. Yeah, or Amazon versus everything else. Because, like, yeah, I think it's really important to support small local businesses and stuff. Um, I think it's really bad when everything is just taken over by really big companies. I guess that's, yeah, that's a result of this free market because they can manipulate it. Okay, that's very interesting. I am learning things. Thank you for all the explanations. It really helps. Um. Okay. I will... Yeah, I don't think curses are real. They shouldn't be, but they seem real. Anyhow, they say that these grounds are doomed for businesses. Nah. Yeah, they're not doomed, but your mother should learn from their mistakes. Of course, sir. Um... <laughs> End of conversation. Why are we going to ask the kid what is romance? Right, what is this crime business? Crime fiction is about murders or burglaries or things like that. And the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch the criminals. Okay, this is meta. Um. <laughs> uh... Why would anyone want to read about crime? It's exciting to people, I guess. They get to imagine dangerous things. And it's kind of like a puzzle. But you can guess who the criminal is, or how the good guys are going to catch him. Yeah, I love it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I agree with you, Annette. I decided maybe that um, after I've finished my set of games that I'm playing after this, I might do some murder mystery games um, for a bit. I'm really excited. I love murder mysteries. 
Um, just ask your physical instrument <laughs> about romance. <laughs> I wonder if he'll reply. <laughs> or that old lady you hit on. She knows. She definitely knows. I'm a policeman myself, by the way. You don't look much like a policeman. She examined you as if to find something policeman-like. I mean, I lost everything. But I do have this torch. Um... What does a cop look like then? Didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. She points to a book, book cover on which you see a strapping verpatine officer. He stands grimly over the body of a dead woman. Is that an officer or is that a murderer? Um... Mm. <laughs> it's not your body that's important in police work anyway. It's you. It's, you. it's what's in here. Head. Yes. No. Your resilience. <laughs> oh, sorry, pain threshold. Um. I was going to say I'm wow rude, but she is definitely right. <laughs> yeah. Look at me with my... Like, what am I even carrying? That's my chain cutters. And my, my yellow marigolds. And my torch shining above her head. Like, wouldn't you trust this cop? Um. Verpetine. Vespertine. Of or related to evening. So he is an officer of the night. Oh. Okay, that's. Okay. I thought that word was like a. A place in this game so it was like a race <laughs> it is a poetic term vespertine okay thank you thank of the night related to the evening thank you um you thought it might be too you are seen in that no this that's sweet keep them coming if you're curious about anything um grit a total disregard for personal safety you gotta take the pain Oh god, we're saying this. We don't have an option. This Mullen guy looks like he'd run to his mum. Ain't got no balls. That's a bit childish. <laughs> we're getting told we're childish by the child. And she's right. <laughs> what? A dick with no balls. Bam. Mullen's no real deal. He's got nothing on me. <laughs> oh, no, it's too much. I don't want to say that to a little girl. I would say this to anybody else, but let's let's not say it to the little girl. Say what, sir? Uh oh, she heard that. Uh. Never you mind. Either way, I'm not impressed with this Mullen guy. You don't have to be, sir. He's just a fictional character. He's no match for you. Oh, she's so sweet. Um. That is generally your husband's handle. He goes by Vespa. Vespa. Am I saying that right? Vespa of the night. Ooh, I like that. Ves well, Vespertine. Vespa. That's a cool name. Learn new words every day. Hell yeah. Especially when playing Disco Elysium. Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir. Like in the books. Hell yeah. Okay. Afraid of the curse? I'm not afraid of the curse. Right, uh, let's talk some more before... I think we should save the checks until last because sometimes we find more things to make them better. But also sometimes we find more things to make them worse. What is romance, Annette? It's the type of book where there's a rich lady and she has to choose between the good man and the bad man. Okay, that's what romance is. Or there could be a story about a poor lady getting a rich man. It's about man and lady business, sir. It's about man and lady business. It's a good summary. <laughs> uh, hold on. Right. <laughs> uh... I don't know which one to choose. What about a book where the man and lady business doesn't work out at all? 
I haven't read many of those. Maybe you should ask mum. Okay. Yeah, you think she has one about an excruciatingly painful breakup? I don't think it's a romance story if the main characters break up, though. Um... <laughs> Oh god, think about it, one where they plunge into a torrid spiral of pain and recrimination, only it's really long and drawn out. Scarred for life, phantom limb. I think we might be projecting. <laughs> oh no, you having flashbacks. <laughs> I'm gonna ask her. Um, no, I don't know. Oh, she's so puzzled. <laughs> Noob is all about, what's recrimination, by the way? That's another word that I've never seen before. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious how defensive he gets over a mention of some fictional detective. He really despises Dick Mullen, doesn't he? Um, an accusation in response to one from someone else. Oh, okay, okay. That sounds messy. You can take this. Blossom like a pain flower. Yeah, blossom like a pain flower. Oh no, we're gonna damage our morale. Yeah, yeah, and it drags on for years and years with no resolution in sight. I think she'll just stop talking. She'll just be eyes glazed over. The girl is at a loss for words. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna have to buy you a dictionary, right? I am awful with words. Like, I don't know. I just didn't learn very ranged vocabulary. <laughs> Seems to be getting a lot of memories back from this. That's true. I feel like he can't remember the specifics. He only remembers the pain. <laughs> um, Each of you filling with resentment and bitterness for having ruined each other's lives. But these are like words coming from whatever's been said. So yeah. She shifts and sways on her feet, looking confused and <laughs> uncomfortable. Yep, I feel for this girl. Each of you tearing the other's innards? What? Tearing at the other's innards? Leaving a gaping emptiness? A vacuum heart that still hurts ceaselessly? I'm sorry, sir. Fuck! I don't know how to help you. I knew it. Like, I knew it. I said it. And I couldn't get out of it. Um... You read a lot and that's where you learn words. I should read more. I have some books actually that I'm going to read. Uh, but they're in my mum's house. I need to get them. But yeah, I should read more for sure. A diverse vocabulary. Very posh. <laughs> Disco Elysium does have a particularly wide vocabulary. Yeah. Like I see a lot of people say that it's really well written. But to me, like, there's certain books that I won't even touch because I find it intimidating. And this would probably, if this was a book, I probably wouldn't touch it. <laughs> you have some books. I can't read. <laughs> um, some of these, you know, and get in context, but can't really define them. Yeah, I'm like that for a lot of things too, actually. Like, sometimes I think I've got a vague idea of what it means. But when someone says, can you define this word, it's like... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Have you got a good reading app on your phone or so? Some of those, when you highlight a word, it gives you a definition from the internet. Oh, that would be, that would be really nice. I wish physical books did that. <laughs> there are many free classic books on Project Gutenberg in ebook format. Are they in English? Sounds German. <laughs> Um, yes, okay. <laughs> you can't visit the website anymore because they are arguing with the German government. Oh dear. Okay. I've, yeah, I, I should try and get, because also it's good. That's like one of the best things to do before you go to sleep, isn't it? To just switch your brain off without, you know, lights from electronics and stuff like that. Um... Gutenberg made the first printing press. Oh, invented it. They named it after him for free distribution of copyright free books. That makes sense. Oh, there's probably, yeah, there'll probably be some stuff on there that I could read actually. Old cooking books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice, that's good. I mean, 
Surely recipes don't age, right? Um, they can be old fashioned, but they still work no matter what year it is. <laughs> Get them in formats for all kinds of things. Ah, oh, that's cool. You have trouble reading older books because they're too wordy, which makes sense. They generally, oh, were paid by the word. That does make sense. Yeah, I find things that are too wordy. Like, I would really like to read the Lord of the Rings books, but whenever I've tried, I've been a bit overwhelmed. <laughs> uh, some of the ingredients might be a bit confusing at certain ages. Oh, do you mean like different names for things? Anyway, anyway, I will try and continue <laughs> at the same time. Uh, oh, I'm really upset about that morale. We can, we can, we've got stuff. Uh, <laughs> why can't you help me? I'm beyond help, right? Are we just gonna die because we've descended into a spiral? Sir, sorry, sir. I'm still little. Oh. I, I don't, I can't. Yeah, let's back up out of this. I'm sorry, little girl. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I don't want to save this until I've recovered some morale. Uh, cookbooks from the 50s to 70s were awful. Jello food, mayo and everything. Really? Unless you like prawns in lime jelly. Oh, that sounds grim. <laughs> I do like mayo. <laughs> that sounds good. Okay. She's very happy to be out of this conversation now. Uh, oh, we can ask all of these. Damn. It happens, but usually the guy gets rich in the process. Or should actually be rich himself, but has lost his family property unjustly. Like during the revolution or something. I see. Those are unhappy books for most of the pages. People sad about what they have lost, but then it all turns out just fine in the end. Cool. What about... When both of the men are bad. These are not very common. You can't have a choice between bad and bad. Nobody wants to read a story like that. What if it's written really well? Can I think of any stories between bad and bad? It sounds interesting. I think I would read it. Well, maybe then it's fine. Maybe if the lady then decides not to pick either because she doesn't need a bad man. Yes, that would be interesting. Ah, I like this twist. That's cool. Um... You grew up in the 70s, you think they put LSD in the water. It's the only thing that explains that decade. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I understand that the arrival of home refrigeration and widely available canned goods gave people access to foods they could never before. Quicker and easier than ever. That, yeah, that makes sense. And it went a bit wild, yeah. <laughs> the colours, the fashions, just wrong. The food. <laughs> oh yeah, everyone was just high. Does high encompass all drugs? <laughs> or is that just a term for specific drugs and then other drugs get you something else? <laughs> um, lots of experimenting, yeah. For sure. It sounds wild. Um, what about when everyone is poor? That's really not a proper romance story. That's more like everyday life. He, well, there can be romance in everyday life. I don't understand your point. Sometimes you have to write about real life things. Not in romance books, sir. These are about nice and pretty people and everyone is happy in the end. Why do they have to be pretty? They can still be happy in the end. Annette? Stop. <laughs> That's enough romance for me. Maybe some about other books? Um. Who are these famous people? Oh, the biographies. Oh, kings and queens and generals of old. Or artists and writers. Or musicians. Those kinds of people. There's usually something extraordinary about them. So... Okay, yeah, because they won't have the same kind of famous people that we have currently with our technology and stuff. 
Um, you think high is a feeling and you can get it from other things than drugs. <laughs> okay. So, because I was thinking that like, when you drink, you get drunk. When you smoke weed, you get high. But is, um, what's another drug? <laughs> Don't do drugs. Cocaine, is that high? Um, drugs are the easy way. Hmm. Um, okay. I think that's why people read them, to find the secrets of their fame. Alcohol is a mild depressant, so it gives you law, a law, if anything, yeah. <laughs> Opiates will make you sleep. So, <clears throat> there should be a word for, like, law. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, hold on. Sorry, I, I wasn't listening there. I think that's why people read them, to find the secrets of their fame. And then try and copy it for themselves. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from reading them. Yeah. Uh, reading those doesn't make the readers more famous, does it? But it does make the famous people more famous. <laughs> smart. You're very smart. Um... Fame is for vain people. I have better things to do. Okay, sir. No, oh, she's so cute. Um, I don't know if I should talk to her mum first. I'm not sure what this check's about. I'm gonna deduce something now. Are we still proven that we're better? You failed oh. to deduce anything <laughs> substantial. We suck. She waits intently. Fuck. You are very small. Come on, don't be silly. That's not a proper deduction. Uh, we can do it again if we put more skill points in it. It didn't hurt us. Oh, there's the auto save. I'm gonna have to use a morale. Where do we get more stuff? Low is a real word used for mental states that are the opposite of high. Yeah, well, yeah, like low. I get that, but you don't say, like, I'm gonna get low on alcohol. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm gonna get low on opiates. <laughs> but you would say, I don't know, well, you would say drunk <laughs> on uh, alcohol. <laughs> okay, you don't say that. <laughs> Sounds a bit strange. Um, pick dialogue options that begin with hold on or wait to gain additionally. Oh yeah, before the conversation moves on. That's actually good to be clarified. Let's have a look around this shop and then we can talk to the mom. Tell her off for letting the kids stand outside. In the snow. Gift books and molten candy. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hyamdal somewhere. Hyamdal. Um. <laughs> they do. What? Do people still say stoned? They do as far as I know. Yeah, I think so. Otherwise, my stone-based jokes don't make sense to anyone. <laughs> yeah. These are not my people, so I'm not really in the loop. <laughs> yeah. There's like, there's lots of different words for like, cannabis. But I don't know how many of those are just for that drug or if it's for other drugs. That was like the main question that I had. But... Yeah, because I'm not in the loop either. <laughs> um, right. Is this from Thor? Um, do I want to ask? Let's just look. Rows and rows of Hiem Dalamen blur Whoa, your vision. No. You make out some titles. Man from Hiem Dal, 
and the Mammoth Riders. Man from Hyeomdal returned to Hyeomdal, and the Solipsistic Man from Hyeomdal and the Hyeomdal Man. Good God, how many are there? Maybe a hundred. Whoa. Man from Hyeomdal All right. and the Sages at the End of the World. I'm good. Man from Hyeomdal yep. and those snow crabs are worse than they sound. <laughs> Snow crabs, in my experience, are really dangerous. Remember book snacks? Scoopy Banoopy, man. Frickin' terrifying. Not even close. Oh, God. There's man more. Man from Hyeomdal in hell. Man from Hyeomdal and the forest of slaves. A twinge at the back of your head makes you flinch. Your eye starts twitching. Oh, what is it? Your hand reaches toward a book with glossy cover art of the very muscular man from Hyeomdal in chains, kneeling in front of a staircase leading to a throne. A woman sits on the throne, leering at the man. She's laughing at him, belittling him. Okay, why are we drawn to this? Between the throne and the Hyeomdal man lies oh. a bonfire, casting shadows on the wall. The shadow of the woman's headdress looks like a pair of devil horns. <laughs> the title reads, Man from Hyeomdal and the Devil Woman. So are we the man from Hyeomdal and our ex is the devil woman? Because <laughs> based on the story we just told, that sounds about right. Um, I think I'm just going to say it interesting because I don't want to lose any more morale. The display rack before you is burdened under piles of Man from Hyeomdal novels. Oh, we want to buy it, apparently. But it costs nine reals, if that was what they were called. And I only have 175, and I need a map and a raincoat. And to buy my gun back from the pawn store. Um, Noob trying to blend in like... Yo, what's up, kids? You ready to get low on alcoholic beverages? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is true. Solipsism is the philosophical idea that one's, only one's mind is sure to exist as an ep... Um, are you trying to kill me, Crafty? As an epistemological position, solipsism holds the knowledge of anything outside one's own mind is unsure the external world and other minds cannot be known and might not exist outside the mind getting existential where did we see the word solipsism but also do you ever get that i do sometimes <laughs> i'm like is everything real <laughs> but then i'm like yeah <laughs> one of the books was described okay cool um he did seem to think he wanted to read a book like his own life. Oh yeah, maybe it will help and not drive you over the edge. That's true, right? We should try and buy this book when we've got more money. Solipsistic. I miss that word. Sometimes if I don't know a word, I'll just blank it. <laughs> right, I guess we can ask the Starkeep. Oh, Man from Hjelmdal. A very popular series of adventure novels. They're awfully immoral and violent books. Oh, why are they so popular then? Blood and violence, scantily clad women, epic narratives, all those mystical things he encounters. They're bound to grab those with little imagination and nothing to do. I mean, it sounds like a lot of video games too. <laughs> um, it sounds good. Which should I start with? What does it matter? They're all the same. However, the customer is always right, they say. Don't you belittle me. If you're a novice of the series, I'd recommend Hjelm Dalaman, the man from Hjelm Dal. It's supposed to be a good introduction to the series. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. So now I can buy two books. Oh, that's cool. Like, I just want to buy books. I don't want to solve the case. Blanket. Old sports magazines tucked away in a dark corner. She clearly doesn't like the spot then. What was blanket? <laughs> the book collects the national recipes of Arda. They are all about lake trout. 
There's your recipe book. Oh, you blank it out. <laughs> Whoosh. Lake trout in jello. Yep. Lake trout in mayo. Um, it's all I've got. A small mountain of colourful board game boxes. Here we go. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral related merchandise. I feel like my half light would not enjoy playing a board game. Look through the pile. An endless variety of source books, lore books, and codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, Second Edition. You were just reading about a liver sausage pineapple. Ugh. <laughs> um Codices. Is that what that said? I don't know what that means. <laughs> As always. There's also a large hardbound tome with intricate cover art, The Hunters of Catawack, Boreal Creature Compendium, and a Pick Your Path adventure game book titled Tales of Wirral, Cavern of Velcrag. I like Pick Your Path adventure games. Books in a board game section? Who wants to read books? All right, fine. <laughs> Uh, anything that catches my eye? There's a box that says Wirral, 3rd edition mega setting supplements module. The side panel notes a fantastic adventure board game, new maps and miniatures. A sticker on it displays 25 real. Right, well we definitely can't afford it, but also doesn't that sound really advanced? Like, it's an add-on to a game? Oh, several codex, codices, codexes, codices. It's more like it's more than one index is indices. More than one matrix is matrices. Okay, I've, n I've never. I don't think I've ever tried to pluralize a word with x on the end or x. Just x. <laughs> Um, I feel like I was saying it wrong. <laughs> I would love to see you playing a role-playing game within a role-playing game. It could happen if I can get 25 real. That price is steep, but then it's the third edition mega setting supplement. So it makes sense. Yeah, now I know exactly. Nonsense for anemic beano clouds. What? Oh, didn't, wasn't... Beano clads, people wearing glasses? Anemic Beano clads? Is that supposed to be like... Is that posh for nerd? Yeah, <laughs> physical instrument is not into this nerd shit. <laughs> it means four eyes, that was it. So... Nonsense for nerds. <laughs> oh yeah, our physical instrument is like... <laughs> In French, right. Okay, so we can't buy that yet. Starkeep, give me some info. Wonderful board games, sir. The Viticulturist is a classic for sure. Or perhaps you'd like Archipelagos of Insulinda. A very educational game for those interested in geography. I do like geography. Raubritta is a fun game of economic competition, but can get quite intense after a while. <laughs> we have games for the whole family. You can play with your children. Is that Monopoly? <laughs> Who are you going to play board games with? Do you have friends or family? Inland Empire, it's not the time. Are you actually friends or just colleagues thrown together by circumstance? Um, I don't feel as if I have any kids. Friends are technically like family. What? <laughs> Did we say that out loud? <laughs> uh, there you go, a game to teach you economics. <laughs> yeah, we should have bought that one. Um... For playing with friends, I'd recommend Suzerainity. 
It's a civilization building game where you build a civilization. Then set off no. to brutally colonize and repress other civilizations. It'll cost 12 real. Well, so you recommend that, but the books are a no go. Okay. <laughs> Lousy auras there. No, role playing games are popular among those types. You know, who are into those kind of things. Personally, I don't like it. Not at all. Those kind of things? What's that supposed to mean? We're not all murderers, you know. <laughs> um, it means Robin Knight, an unconspicuous feudal owner who imposes high taxes. <laughs> Perhaps it is a comparison for Monopoly. It sounded like it when it was saying like, Whatever it said, <laughs> the description of it. Um, those times with those kind of things. <laughs> I am not sure. Unconspicuous or unscrupulous. <laughs> what? I'm so confused. <laughs> 70s satanic panic reference. Why is everything from the 70s? <laughs> We're just getting spammed with quotes. If you are unscrupulous, you have no scruples. What's a scruple? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea what you are talking about. <laughs> Having scruples is kind of like living, having a conscience. Your morals or scruples cause you to act in a way you think are right. So she's saying that people who play um, RPGs have morals. <laughs> and that's a bad thing. I've heard they turn people into a cult enthusiast. Oh, there we go. That they have rituals. Where they try to summon entities. Ah. Highly immoral stuff. You can still buy them though. Okay, there's the satanic stuff. <laughs> um, okay. But why don't people understand the difference between fiction? <laughs> they do not have morals. Um, some of the D&D panic extended into the early 80s. There was also the 80s satanic cult childcare panics. Holy shit, like people are strange, don't you think? Alright, thank you for your expertise on these board games. Let's pop upstairs. Oh, a curtain. We're definitely gonna try and open that. Alright, let's do all of these little things first. A quaint picture book brochure, very colourful. It's a tome of fascist magic, rather candid. Okay. Let's do this one. Uh, another boring book. Just discarded here. Okay, fine, fine. Uh, even in the 90s, you knew some kids who had Yu-Gi-Oh cards taken off them because parents thought it was about summing him, summing, summing, so fucking hell summoning demons i mean they weren't totally wrong on that imagine getting your yu-gi-oh cards taken off you though for summoning demons <laughs> i can't do words man <laughs> um you think that adequately describes the us <laughs> hi mark hey new hey chat oh my i'm never gonna play a board game ever again if I ever have played a board game, that is. <laughs> I would love to play more board games. I don't have anyone to play board games with. But I would love it. I wish I had like a group of friends. Like people... Oh god, that sounded really sad. <laughs> I wish I had a group of friends that would like get together and play board games. It would be fun. 